One of my daughters recently was talking to me about storing and organizing her medieval gear. So I decided to make her an Usaberg chest from the 178 grave. This is an awesome project to do. It's an easy project to do in really just a weekend or even perhaps just a day. You don't have to have fancy tools. You don't even have to have lots of money for this. This is a straightforward project. It's very easy to achieve. Let's take a look. Alrighty guys, so we're, today we're looking at an Osborg style chest, Osborg. Um, now, let's talk about research and history. This particular chest is going to be a faithful reproduction of the Osborg 178 chest. That is, it was found from grave number 178. So it is a fairly straightforward reproduction and the evidence is pretty clear. Uh, now, this was a fairly classic six board chest. It consisted of a top piece, a bottom piece, um, two side pieces, and two end pieces. I'm not drawing any of this to scale quite obviously. All right. Now, let's quickly talk about materials. So far as I know, and I haven't had the opportunity to see this um, directly, but these would have largely either been produced out of oak or pine. Now, um, so it depends upon where in Scandinavia these would have originated from, and the same kind of chest was produced throughout um, sort of Western Europe, predominantly by sort of Norse people and that included Norse settlers into um, Scotland and, and what then became like modern day England. Uh, in terms of colours we believe that this would have just been a straightforward wooden chest so it wouldn't have been painted or anything like that there wouldn't have been particular decorations um, but there were carvings. So we're going to look at carvings. That will be specific to, to me and, I, and I'll do my own carvings. But let's talk some measurements now. The top measured, uh, now these are all in centimetres. Um, if you do know the, the, the imperial equivalents, please let me know. All right. All right, so I'm just basically filling these in as we go. And that should be pretty obvious where we are with it. All right, radio. So uh, this board then marries up with the side. On the inside, there would be a groove. that co-locates with the side of the bottom piece. These um, small sections here, the tongue would then fit into the groove that's created here. Um, top would have just used some very basic iron hinges to go onto the sides, but this is, is very simple. Rightio, so there we go guys, that's our plans for our Ozerberg chest. Now, um, I do apologize about my pronunciation. I realize I'm probably getting that wrong. Now, my personal goal here is to be able to produce 12 of these in the next nine months for my own friends and family and my own group. Um, I have produced some chests like this in the past. It's important to note that all chests 
found have all been different. There is no one particular style or one set of measurements that was common. Uh, they're all very different and very unique. Today we're looking at constructing a Oseberg chest. Uh, and I think these things are fantastic. Uh, I'm making a whole bunch of these for my, my friends and family because um, I want to be able to, to store their stuff all together. So, you know, everyone's gear goes in one place. Uh, everyone knows where their gear is and there's no ifs, buts, questions or maybes. Uh, and it's kept nicely that way. It, much easier to transport you know where your stuff is it doesn't get lost around people's bedrooms and stuff and especially when uh where i live there's probably i don't know um maybe six to eight annual medieval events each year uh and therefore predominantly for a lot of the year the kids don't really need to be getting into their stuff and so it, it is quite easy for things to get lost so I really wanted to create some some chests that were going to uh, accommodate that alrighty guys let's uh, let's get cracking let's make our chest and see how that goes together Any kind of woodworking project like this, you really do need the correct PPE on that is personal protective equipment. That is glasses, a mask, and ear defenders.
So the construction's complete. The assembly's gone pretty well. I'm very happy with the outcome. I've had to use modern screws on the top to hold the hinge in place because I can't seem to get a hold of uh, historical screws and hardware, but that's okay. The um, actual hinges themselves should be pretty reasonable. There's no rope handle because uh, there was none on the original. But otherwise I'm really happy with that and I'm going to do the uh, carving in the next episode. Righto guys, all finished, all done and I'm really really happy with this. In the next episode we're going to carve this and we're going to talk about the Uzeberg chest 178. What might it have been for? There's a lot of debate around some of these um, Viking Age chests. Uh, but this is a really awesome project to do. I really recommend it for anybody who's into medieval reenactment. Perhaps you're an enthusiast or maybe you're just uh, someone who's very excited about the whole period. And these are really great things to do. And for those of you who collect gear, this is a great way to store it, organize it and keep it out of the way so it doesn't get uh, damaged and that kind of thing. I'm really happy with this. In the next episode, we're going to do some carving and we're going to talk about uh, how it might have been finished off. Really, really interesting stuff. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe and share. I'll catch you in my next video.